Hello and welcome to another episode of TV on TV. I'm State Representative Tommy Vitolo. You're watching Brookline Interactive Group. It's 2.30, uh, Thursday, October 7th. And we've got a great episode, but rather than a traditional interview like I typically do, instead, I'm gonna teach you how to make Nana's Italian Sunday gravy. Delicious, you're gonna love it. And uh, before that, we're gonna do a little bit of news like we always do. Over the past week, Nationally, we've had a presidential debate. We've had a president get sick with COVID and we've had a vice presidential debate. And the sum total of all of that seems to have moved the needle uh, a little bit more toward Joe Biden. But of course, we'll know on November 3rd. And on that note, I wanna let folks know that the voting by mail envelopes are arriving. I got mine yesterday. You may get yours today. You've got a lot of choices on what you want to do with mail-in. You can fill it out and put it in the mail. If you're going to do that, do it quickly. You can fill it out and bring it to Town Hall, 333 Washington Street, and leave it in the drop box 24-7. You can choose to vote in person at Town Hall later this month. And of course, you can vote in person on Election Day on November 3rd. Whatever you prefer. Please be thoughtful about your ballot. Make sure you get it in. Make sure you fill it out completely and correctly. If you go in person, please use the uh, distancing and masks that we expect from everyone nowadays. Uh, locally, there's not much news. Guidance has come out for Halloween. The town is discouraging door-to-door trick-or-treating. Will not be closing any streets for block parties or parades and in fact has, has recommended households just keep their porch light off on October 31st. Fun activities instead, you know, you can do a costume party on Zoom and Halloween night is a great night to watch a scary movie. That's really it for the week. Stay tuned, we're gonna cut right over to uh, a recipe, a how-to on how to make really, really delicious Italian red sauce, what we in my family grew up calling gravy. So stay tuned here on Brookline Interactive Group. Hello everyone and welcome. My name is State Representative Tommy Vitolo and I want to share with you something that's very important culturally to my family and also something that can help you uh, put together quite a few meals during these challenging times of COVID-19. And I'm talking eggplant parmesan, I'm talking macaroni, I'm talking big ziti, I'm talking meatball subs. The fundamental to all of these dishes, really the only dishes we need, is gravy. Now, some people call it tomato sauce, but me, being an Italian kid from the New York area, grew up calling it gravy. My father, he's half Italian, he's from the Bronx, his mother's Irish. My mother, she's half Italian, she's from Westchester County, her father's Portuguese. My wife, Jennifer Toronto, her father's fully Italian from Brooklyn, her mother, not so Italian. So I'm half Italian, my wife's half Italian, our kids, Felice and Angelina, are half Italian. And for us, gravy is the important cultural uh, food that brings it all together. And when I say Italian, I really do mean New York Italian, not Italy Italian. They are different. Um, the Italian, folks with Italian heritage in New York pronounce the Italian words differently than those in Italy. We eat different foods. Uh, and this really is culturally New York Italian. The most important thing about gravy is everybody does it differently. And if you think it should be a little different, make it a little different, right? So I'm gonna make it the way that we make it when we're doing a quick, easy gravy. And if you want a little more of this, a little less of that, you wanna substitute, you go ahead and you do that. But this is the way we like to make it. The first thing is you don't make gravy in a suit. So I'm gonna take the suit off. Don't get too excited, I got a shirt underneath. This, 
much more appropriate for making gravy. But even this, this is a, a large white canvas, a lot of tomatoes, there's gonna splatter. You'd like to do a little better than that. So, I got an apron. My father gave me this apron. It says, the trouble with Italian food is three days later, you're hungry again. It's a lame joke, but there it is. So thanks to AP chemistry class, I may still be able to tie behind my back. Nope, I'll try it one more time. Thanks to AP chemistry class, I can tie a bow behind my back. Yeah, maybe. So, the things that we need to get started with. Let's say, let's go through over everything we're gonna need. Gonna need a stock pot. This is eight quarts. This is like the smallest I would use, um, but I got a family of four who eats a lot of gravy. We put it in the freezer. Sometimes I'll use my 18. Uh, I wouldn't go much smaller than this though. You don't have to fill it all the way, but I wouldn't go much smaller than this. You're gonna need olive oil. Now we, we get it in the bigger cans, um, but these are hard to manage when you're cooking. So what I will do is I will put it in uh, a smaller bottle, this little plastic bottle I've used, I don't know, 50 times. Uh, all the cooking shows talk about EVOO, extra virgin olive oil. I don't know that it's really necessary. Um, it gets talked up a lot. I wouldn't worry too much about it. You're gonna need tomatoes. This is a 28 ounce can of tomatoes. I use diced because I like my gravy a little chunkier, a little more like salsa. Some people use puree, some people use crushed. Find what works for you. Garlic, very important. This is fresh garlic, ideal, but a pain in the neck. So you can always use minced garlic, totally fine. I should have done better in chemistry. I would have been better at tying this. Maybe I got it this time. There we go. Other ingredients. Salt and pepper, S and P, very important. Oregano, basil. You could also use fresh basil. And then I like to put in crushed red pepper. My daughter does not. So I probably won't do it today, but it's something for you to think about. Other ingredients. What am I missing? A little vino. This is a near d'avola. This is important both to keep you well lubricated as well as uh, to throw a little in the gravy. Now what I will do is if my wife and I open a bottle of wine and we don't finish it, I'll use that kind of that leftover uh, wine for the gravy uh, if I've got it. The other thing, and it's controversial, I put sugar in, not everybody does, not everybody thinks it's a good idea, but if I put in wine, I like to put in sugar. Also, it's critical to have things to dip. Dipping is part of the gravy making process. So bread, Fresh mozzarella. Now, mozzarella for some folks at home, but for us, it's mozzarella. And of course, a wooden spoon. It's nice to have a couple, just in case, but definitely have the one. When you start, the only things you need to have ready are olive oil, garlic, and an open can of tomatoes. And this is important. So. We get our burner going. Where's mommy? Mama's in the other room. Okay. That's Angelina. And we get some olive oil in there. Now you don't want it too high because the olive oil will burn. And if the olive oil burns, or once the garlic is in it, if the garlic burns, you have to throw it out really carefully and thoroughly clean and start over. Otherwise, no matter how much tomatoes you put in, it's gonna taste like burnt. It'll be terrible, it'll be a tragedy. So really, you wanna make sure you don't overdo it. And what you can do is take just a little bit of garlic, or if you don't use garlic, you can do a little bit of onion, and put it in there and then you can be listening 
and keeping an eye on it. When it starts to pop, when it starts to sizzle, you'll know you're ready to put all of it in. Now, the reason why you want to have an open can of tomatoes, I've already got one open here, is after you've been simmering that garlic or the onions, your choice, for 20 seconds, you'll get a nice whiff of it. And at that moment, you want to put the can of tomatoes in and stir from the bottom. Because what will happen is the olive oil will continue cooking the onion or the garlic. I don't like to use both, one or the other. And if you don't cover it quickly and stir it, you'll burn. So again, you don't want to do that burn. Really important. And that's why I like to have an open can of tomatoes ready. Uh, and then I get that first can in and I stir it around. And now I got all the time in the world. And then it's easy peasy. But at that first part, we want to take it easy. We want to be careful. They give us a little more heat to get us moving. The oils are getting a little thinner. And we're going to let this sit for a few minutes. Now, I do want to mention vegetarian gravy, meat gravy. Again, it's up to you. Most Italians will invariably end up with some pork in the gravy, either uh, from sausages or meatballs or even ribs. Uh, and if you let the meat simmer in the gravy, it's delicious. The more hours, the better. But not everybody wants to put meat in their gravy, and that's okay. And not everybody wants pork in their gravy, and that's okay. You do what works for you. Many folks um, who might be watching this show are not going to mix dairy with meat. And since it's so nice to have good Italian cheese with the gravy, that might be another reason to not put meat in the gravy. Now we're just starting to get a little simmer. I'd be amazed if the iPhone 10 microphone is that good. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to put it all in. And that's a good healthy amount of, of, of garlic. That's about six cloves. Um, really it's to taste. I like a lot of garlic. I feel like you can't go wrong. This is not like a first date dish. This is a happily married dish. You know, too much garlic on the first date's a problem, but the longer you're married, the less it matters. So you get that garlic going, you stir it around, you make sure it doesn't clump. Keep it moving. You want to be careful of splatter. Hot oil splattering is no fun. And we're waiting to catch that big whiff. I just want to keep it stirring. I don't want to let it get up high on the sides. I want to keep it down on the, the floor of the pot here so it keeps getting that heat on it. We want it to brown just a touch, but we do not want it to burn. There we go. As I said earlier, some people use onions. That's okay. Now, when I put that first one in, I like to pour it low in the pan, and low in the pot, so it doesn't splatter. And then, again, you want to get that spoon in. You really want to stir it up so that you drop you drop that temperature down on that oil, and you don't burn the garlic. And that's it. We have now done the stressful, fast-paced portion of making gravy. I've got three other cans I'm going to put in. Normally I wouldn't have all four open, but here we are in the world of Brookline Interactive Group Television. And I've seen a cooking show or two in my time. Maybe Julia Child from across the river in Cambridge. Now, I learned how to make gravy from my mother's mother, who we call Nana. Nana, just a couple of days ago, turned 94. And she's still doing fine. She doesn't remember all the details she used to remember. But she's still doing just fine. And we all had a nice Zoom conference. All the cousins, all of the grandkids. It was nice. Happy birthday, Nana. 
We've got four 20 ounce cans of tomatoes and we're gonna let that sit and we're gonna stir. The stirring is very important. I wanna talk about some of the other things we're gonna end up putting in really to taste. Salt and pepper, S and P, you can really put in any time, but there's no rush. Your other spices, basil, oregano, crushed red pepper, I put in at the end. I don't see any reason to put them in earlier than that. Um, the exception though, are these bay leaves. Now, these particular bay leaves came from a plant on an island called Filicudi, uh, off the coast of Sicily, one of the seven Aeolian islands in Italy. And um, my wife smuggled them into the US, probably violating several recommendations. And I will tell you that I don't have the foggiest idea what this does for the, for the flavor, but I've had this giant jar for almost 15 years and it's not even halfway empty. So I make a point of throwing some leaves in the gravy. I'm sure somebody who knows more about this than me can explain if that makes any sense at all. I don't recommend you eat the leaves later. You can pick them out, no big deal. So I try to get those in, but everything else really, there's no rush. Now, the longer this stays on, the more the water is gonna evaporate out. And that makes your gravy thicker. The more you stir it, the less chunky it gets. It sort of smooths out a little bit. But with diced tomatoes, you're never gonna get it to be like a puree. If you want your gravy to be like a puree, if you want it to be really smooth, don't start with diced tomatoes, start with puree. Again, I like mine a little chunky. We were talking before about the meats. So here's a couple of ideas if you wanna put meats in your gravy. Meatballs are great. There are some store brands, some store meatballs, frozen meatballs that work just fine. You can make your own. It's a big pain in the neck. Um, do it for people you love. Don't do it for just for people you like. What you can do that's also really nice is you get some nice Italian sausage, sweet or hot, and you can parboil it so that it's cooked and put it right in. You want to be careful if you've got fresh sausage, oftentimes the ends um, are tied together with, with string and they can open up. Um, so if you want to keep that sausage whole, what I actually do is if I'm going to make like sausage and peppers with, with gravy, instead of putting the sausage in the gravy, what I'll do is I'll get a crock pot and have gravy already made and then just let it simmer in the crock pot so I'm not stirring the sausages and agitating the sausages where they might open up. But one thing that's really nice, and my Nana is a firm believer in this, is you take a fresh sausage, you get down at the north end or somewhere else, and with the scissors, you cut the natural casing open and you cook the sausage meat. Now this is not just ground beef, right? This is beautiful, spicy Italian sausage. And you cook that brown meat, and then you put it in with the oil, with the drippings. That's the fat that makes it taste delicious. And then you got yourself a ragu, a meat gravy. So you can use sausage, you can use meatballs. Really, you can use any meat that isn't, you know, overly um, seasoned or otherwise like, uh, you know, you wouldn't put like barbecue in, but, but if you've got leftover meat, you throw it in, it's delicious. It gets real tender, falls right off the bone, really nice. Uh, so there's a lot of meat choices. You can do what you like. Um, or you keep it vegetarian, which we often do in our house. Uh, we try to eat vegetarian when we, when we, when we can. Uh, you know, we want to be better to animals. We want to be better to the earth. And so we're not, we're not full on vegetarians, but uh, you know, it's not uncommon for us to have a vegetarian meal. So this is really the story. What we're going to do now is we're going to let time and stir control this. We want to keep an eye on it, keep it low. If we're going to walk away, what I like to do is uh, put the lid on a little bit cacazon, a little bit crooked, so that some of that uh, water vapor escapes. Because what I want to do is I want to cook this down a little bit, make it a little bit thicker, a little bit less watery. You can add uh, tomato paste, and that gets you some of the way there. I usually don't. Uh, some people do. I usually don't. I usually just kind of cook it down a little bit and uh, take my time with it. So we're gonna stir. Again, wooden spoon. You wanna get all the way down to the bottom. 
You want to make sure you're dragging along the bottom, you know, write your name in letters on the bottom. You always want to be making sure that you're getting from the bottom. And when you're done, you don't leave it in the gravy. You can put it on a plate, or you can put it on, what are these, a trivet or something. I don't know what it's called. And that's it. That's all we're going to do for now. We're going to add some stuff later, but for now, we're going to stir, take a break, and we'll be back to stir some more. Stir. 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 Come here, son. Stir. 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 So we've done a lot of stirring. That's a good thing. I want to add a few more things to the gravy. These are really optionals, um, but I think they're nice. I'm going to start by adding some red wine. Salud. How much red wine? I don't know. Maybe, um, maybe an oversized glass. Now that can make uh, that can make the gravy a little acidic. It, it adds a nice flavor, but it can make it a little acidic. And so the way that I counter the acids in the gravy is with a little sugar. I don't know, maybe a quarter cup. But just eyeballing it. And like everything else, we're gonna stir. We're gonna stir, we're gonna stir. And through the magic of television, we're going to time elapse and advance into the future. Now here we are in the future. We don't yet have the basil or the oregano, salt and pepper, hot pepper if you're into it, in the gravy. But that doesn't mean we can't sample. Two key ways of sampling your gravy. Bread and mozzarella. This is not tricky. What you want to do is you take it and you dip. Now it's going to be hot. You might want to give it a second. Maybe blow on it. That's delicious. Ooh, that's good. Another thing delightful to dip right into the gravy is a slice of mousse on. You can get it from the grocery store or you can get it uh, from a high-end place. I like buffalo mozzarella. Yes, it's really made from buffalo, from bison. That's amazing. There are buffalo in Italy there are also buffalo in upstate New York. If you get buffalo mozzarella in America, almost certainly, at least on the East Coast, that's coming from upstate New York. Delicious. So you want to dip? So good. So good. Then you get back to the stirring. Oh, look, it's 
my wife, Jennifer. Hi. She's got an arm. <laughs> she can stir. I like more vigorous stirring than just like the simple stir. Stir. That's a great job. It's good to have extra stirrers. If you have multiple people, you got multiple stirrers, and that always makes it a little easier. Okay. Thank you, Angelina. Give me a kiss. Mwah. We keep stirring. We just keep stirring. You don't have to stir the entire time, but you want to stir a lot. It's nice if you've got a friend over. You're talking, you stir. You take turns. Stir. Stir. So we've been stirring for a while and we've probably dropped an inch of height off the gravy. Under longer durations. If I had more time, I might stir it and let it cook another few hours, but we've been working at it for a while. Nothing to be ashamed of here. So what I want to do I'm gonna add some basil. I'm gonna add some fresh basil. And the thing about fresh basil is, there's two theories. One, one theory is that you cut it. The other is that you tear it. It has to do with the oils in the leaf. So I tear it. You may do it differently, but I tear it. And basil gives us that sweetness. If you don't have fresh basil, that's fine. My favorite place, by the way, to get fresh basil under normal circumstances is in the north end on Salem, it's a place called Going Bananas. It's just a, uh, it's a bodega. It's a little convenience shop. And you sell little plastic baggies of basil that are grown year round on somebody's fire escape stoop, I think. And that's nice basil to get, like I said, you can get it year round at Going Bananas. But you can often get it in this plastic packaging at the grocery store and um, you know the plastic packaging is unfortunate but the basil is fine and if you don't use fresh basil you can use dry basil from a spice rack that's all right that's all right um, You know, I worry some spice racks uh, are filled with spices that haven't been used in many years and maybe they don't pack the same punch or any punch at all anymore, but at least in our house, basil goes quick, it still always has that fresh smell to it, even the, even the dried basil doesn't last long in our house. And basil's a thing, you know, you can grow on your windowsill if you have a thumb greener than mine. My wife, Jen. I often will grow basil on the windowsill and it's handy. You just reach over, pick up a couple of leaves and throw them in. So I put some basil in how much? I don't know, some. Like everything else, you just kind of experiment, figure out what you like and how much you like. You know, the nice thing about gravy, especially if you use a stock pot big enough is if you found you put in a little too much or something, Add tomatoes, thin it out. It's not the end of the world. It's more dip. It never hurts to dip. Even better than last time. You put in some oregano. It's a lot of gravy, so you can use a lot of oregano. 
some S and P. And again, I like to use that crushed red pepper flake, but I'm not going to do it today because Angelina doesn't like it. And, you know, she's entitled to have good gravy too, gravy that meets her needs. So we're always stirring, especially when you get those spices in, you want to make sure that they get all the way through. They don't just sit on the top. And this gravy is good to go. So I want to thank you for joining me. I hope that you've learned a few things in this episode. I hope you've learned that we call it gravy. We know we're not talking about brown gravy because we're eating it with macaroni. And so if you are near an Italian-American uh, household, particularly in the New York City area, Act like a local. Call it gravy. Hope you've learned the beginning is the key. You want to make sure you do not burn your oil or your onion or garlic. Very important. If you burn it, it's all right. But you've got to start over or the whole thing will taste burnt. And then after that, I hope you learned that you can experiment. Experiment with diced or crushed or... Uh, pureed tomatoes experiment you can experiment with different olive oils if you like uh, you can experiment with oregano with with basil you can experiment with if you want garlic or if you want onion with you can experiment with crushed red pepper try some red wine in there try some sugar try cooking it down real shallow making it real real thick almost like tomato paste or keeping it thin it's up to you and uh, if you've got extra, you can always freeze it. It does just fine. Thaw it out. Bring it back. Experiment with meat, different kinds of meat. You can keep it vegetarian as well. Most importantly, make a gravy that works for you and your family. And enjoy it. Eat it a lot. It's good for you. Have a good supply of wooden spoons, and you'll be good to go. So again, my name is Tommy Vitolo. I want to give a shout out to... Some of my colleagues in the legislature who I know make incredible gravies, including uh, Majority Leader Donato, Representative Moschino, Speaker DeLeo, all make great gravies. I know also Senator Von Corre, um, Vice Chair uh, Madero on the House side, also top notch. And uh, I haven't tried it, but I've heard that the Mayor of Somerville, Joe Curtithoni, he makes a good gravy as well. I've heard. I haven't tried it, but I've heard. And with that, I wish you health. I wish you uh, love and family, and I wish you a delicious gravy. This is Tommy Vitolo signing off. <laughs>